So you want to use cost caps, but don't know what your cost caps should actually be. Set it too high, and you'll be wasting money. Set it too low, and your ads just won't get delivered. So understanding how to approach your cost caps is essential to succeeding with them. This is actually part two of a three-part mini-series on our no-risk approach to advertising with meta ads for anyone that wants to stretch each dollar further. In part one, we talked about how we can use cost caps to avoid spending your money on ads that don't work, and today we'll be covering how to set them. So what should our cost caps be? Our simplified answer is that we like to start off with a cost cap that's equal to our gross margins. So for example, if we have a shirt that we're selling for $25 and it costs us $10, that means we have $15 of gross margin on that sale. If we take that $15 of margin and use it to find a customer, that means we've acquired that customer for free. In this case, $15 would be our starting cost cap. In this example, we are aiming to break even, which may not sound great, but if you watch to the end, we'll talk about why this actually is okay. Okay, so the $15 in this example is just our starting point, but we'll need to ad either adjust the cost caps up or down based on how performance is going. And there's three main scenarios that you're going to encounter. Your ads are spending, but it's not profitable. Your ads are spending and it's profitable or your ads just aren't spending. But before we talk about how to make adjustments from these scenarios, we need to know whether or not your ads are profitable. To do this, we'll focus on two metrics, CPA or cost per acquisition and ROAS, return on ad spend. So CPA is your ad spend divided by the purchases attributed to those ads. For example, if we have $100 of ad spend and we got four purchases, that would be a $25 CPA. Next, our CPA target would be actually our gross margin of our product. So for example, gross margin could be our revenue minus our costs. So that could be our cost of goods sold, our shipping, our fulfillment fees, our payment processor fees. And so using our $25 shirt, we could say that would be $25 minus $4 for cost of goods sold, $4 for shipping, $1.50 for fulfillment fees, another 50 cents for payment processor fees. That adds up to $10 of costs. So that would be $25 minus 10, which gives us $15. And so what we're aiming for is a CPA that is at or below our CPA target. So that at worst, we're breaking even. But CPA is not a perfect number because it doesn't account for customers who buy more than one thing. In our previous example, what if each of those four purchases had customers that actually bought three shirts instead of just one, so that we have AOV, average order value, of $75. This is where ROAS, return on ad spend, comes in. So your ROAS is your revenue divided by your ad spend. So for example, if we get four purchases at $75 each, that sums up to $300. And since we have that same $100 of ad spend, this will give us a ROAS of 3.0. Next, we're going to want to know how to calculate our break-even ROAS. So this is the number that we're going to have to hit in order to be making money. Um, anything below it means we're losing money. Our break-even ROAS is actually our revenue divided by our gross margin. Since we calculate our gross margin before at $15, um, this would be $25 for the shirt divided by 15 for the gross margin, and that gives us a 1.67 break-even ROAS. Since our 3.0 is larger than 1.67, then we know that these ads are actually profitable. And so once you get comfortable with these numbers, you can actually start to raise your CPA targets to something that's more in line with your AOV instead of a target based on a single item. Now, to make these calculations a little bit easier for you, I've actually created a calculator that helps you calculate your CPA targets and your break-even ROAS. So check that out in the description below. Okay. So let's get back to our three scenarios. For each of these scenarios, you actually have one lever to pull. You either increase your cost cap, which will mean that you're spending more, but less efficiently, or you can decrease your cost caps, which means you spend less, but it'll be more efficient. So the first scenario is our ads are spending, but they're still not profitable. Now, what we do here is we're actually going to decrease our cost caps. And after decreasing them, we may find that they're still spending, but not profitable. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue to decrease until it drops into one of these two scenarios. Um, and the first one is it's either just not going to spend. And if that happens, then essentially this ad's not good enough to uh, find customers at your desired cost cap. And so in that case, you can just kill the ad, turn it off. Or you may find that the ads are spending profitably, in which case... That's great, and we can just let this ad run. 
The second scenario is your ads are spending and it's profitable. In this case, you may want to just do nothing and let your ads run. But if you are finding that it's profitable, but the budget isn't really getting spent, or you actually have uh, enough efficiency that you can uh, drive more growth by increasing the cost caps to get that spend in, then you can actually increase your cost cap. When you increase it, it may still be profitable. So you may then again have that same decision. Am I going to let it run and do nothing? Or am I going to, again, increase that cost cap because it's not spending enough or you have some growth targets and you can afford to um, lower your efficiency? If you increase it too much, you're going to get to the point where your ads are spending and it's not profitable, in which case you just lower your cost caps back down and then now you've sort of found that optimal zone and uh, you can then just do nothing and let them run. And our third scenario is the ads are just not spending. If this is happening, then you can increase your cost caps, which will potentially lead us to still not have the ad spending. Um, but if we increase them enough, then you may get to a point where the ads are spending profitably, in which case you can just let them run, or you can adjust them based on uh, scenario two that we just talked about, or you may increase them to the point where the ads are spending and it's not profitable, in which case we would just turn the ad off. Now, we also have a direct line to turning the ad off. And this is because if when you start adjusting your cost caps, you're going to start to see that there's going to be a certain... Uh, cost cap number that you know is going to be profitable or you know that's not going to be profitable. And if your your ad, if the quality and the action rates just aren't good enough, you're going to potentially have an ad that's at a cost cap that's higher than what you know can be profitable and it's still not spending. Um, and in those cases, you would just turn the ad off directly um, and you wouldn't want to increase those cost caps because you already know based on your previous testing that they're just not going to be profitable even if you increase those cost caps. And so after each change, we'll reevaluate to see which of the three scenarios we fall under and then iterate again. Eventually, we'll determine the ideal cost cap for your funnel, and that will help you get your customers profitably. Earlier, I mentioned that it's okay to acquire customers at break even. Now, breaking even may not sound great, but remember, this is actually just the first purchase. Now, the economics of your store and my store are probably different, but we can also sell our customers more than one thing. If you sell clothing, for example, you can sell a different t-shirt style, a sweater, maybe some pants. So these repeat purchases add up and it will add up to their overall lifetime value, which will be greater than their first purchase. And because that value is greater than the amount that we're willing to acquire that customer for. It's those repeat purchases that help us grow our store and become profitable in the long term. So this is the end of part two. We talked about how to calculate your cost caps and how to adjust them. In part three, we're going to jump into Facebook and actually set up some ads. Let me know in the comments below if anything wasn't clear or if you have any questions. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. You'll get more content like this and it'll help us keep this channel growing. Thank you and see you in part three. Three.